Hey what's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. There is an extremely important mechanic in Paladins which is completely unexplained in the game itself, and it causes certain combos between loadouts, items, and abilities to become less effective. Diminishing returns is a mechanic which causes multiple sources of an effect, like movement speed, cooldown reduction, reload speed, and more, to be reduced for each separate instance or capped at a certain value. It's really important to understand how diminishing returns work so that you can make better loadouts and improve your item buying strategies, which is why in this video I'll be breaking down exactly how diminishing returns works in an easy to understand way. This mechanic isn't explained at all in game, and the only way to find information about it is either on the wiki or by looking up videos on the topic. And of course, there's only one comprehensive video on diminishing returns that I was able to find, and it was my own guide on diminishing returns from two years ago, which has outdated examples and is poorly edited. So I think it's about time for an updated guide on exactly how diminishing returns works. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. So what is diminishing returns? Quite simply, Diminishing Returns is a mechanic which makes certain effects like lifesteal and movement speed buffs less effective when you're stacking multiple sources of the effect. This mechanic guarantees that you will receive the highest value from a buff you receive, and then scales down all the other values to make them less powerful. For example, if you have Ash's Indomitable card, which gives 50% lifesteal, and then by Life Rip on top of that, which grants an additional 30% lifesteal, you receive the full 50% from Ash's card, but only about 10% on top of that from Life Rip, giving you about 60% lifesteal in total. This makes Life Rip a pretty much useless buy when running this card with Ash, all thanks to Diminishing Returns. Another great example is Damage Reduction. Yagaroth has passive 35% damage reduction when she's in planted form. If she were to buy Haven 3 on top of that, she would only be receiving a further 10% damage reduction buff instead of the full 18% extra, all thanks to Diminishing Returns. Or, if you're playing Terminus with Undying, Strength of Stone, and Haven 3, then instead of getting the 58% damage reduction as would be expected if damage reduction were purely additive, Terminus only gets around 46% damage reduction due to diminishing returns. Granted, it's still a lot of damage reduction, but it's a full 12% less than what it would be without diminishing returns. Now, normal effects such as damage reduction and life rip have a standard cap of 95%, so even if you can somehow get 100% lifesteal or beyond in spite of diminishing returns, it'll still limit you to 95%. Also, if you're getting an effect from multiple sources, but they aren't cumulatively higher than 30%, diminishing returns won't kick in. So, if you get 10% lifesteal from Ash's Indomitable card and 10% lifesteal from Life Rip 1, you'll still get the full 20% lifesteal. Once you upgrade Life Rip to level 3 for its 30% bonus, then the 10% from Ash's card will be diminished, giving you a total of 37% lifesteal. If you want to know exactly how much diminishing returns will be affecting you with any given combination of items, cards, and abilities, then I highly recommend using the diminishing returns calculator on the JS Calc blog. This is a useful tool for calculating diminishing returns, which I'll leave linked in the description. Now, there are a few exceptions to this standard diminishing returns calculation. First, let's talk about movement speed. Movement speed is calculated in almost exactly the same way, but it's less harshly diminished than all other effects. It also has a cap of 150% instead of the standard 95%. For example, if you were to stack Talus's Evanescent card with Nimble 3, you would get close to 54% increased movement speed. If the 40% and 21% bonuses were lifesteal instead, you would only get a 50% increase. On the diminishing returns calculator I've linked in the description, you can easily toggle the movement speed calculations on and off with the checkbox at the top. There's also another exception to the standard diminishing returns calculation, and that's reload speed. Reload speed does not actually have diminishing returns calculated at all, so you can stack as many different sources as you want without worrying about them being diminished. However, reload speed has a far lower cap than any other effect, at just 60%. This is important to take into account when considering using one of the many reload speed cards in the game and stacking it with deft hands. For example, if you want to use the hot swap card for Drogos, you should only ever use it at level 2 or level 4. This is because at level 2 and level 4, the card is a multiple of 20, so it can stack with deft hands at tier 1 or tier 2 to get you the maximum amount of reload speed possible, no more and no less. If you use hot swap at level 5 and buy deft hands 1, then you're wasting a loadout point, because you're stacking a 50% reload speed buff with a 20% reload speed buff, and the 10% reload speed gets wasted because of the 60% cap. This rule generally applies to all reload speed cards. You want to try and get them as close to a multiple of 20 as possible if you plan on buying deft hands, so that way, you don't waste any loadout points or credits. 
Lastly, there's one final exception to the standard diminishing returns calculator, and that's damage amps and damage taken debuffs stacking without diminishing returns. You can have your damage amplified in two different ways in Paladins, by debuffing an enemy to cause them to take additional damage, and by buffing yourself to make yourself do additional damage. There are two ways to debuff an enemy to cause them to take additional damage, hitting them directly with Drogos' fire spit and marking them with Tyra's hunter's mark. There are also only two ways to amplify your damage, getting shielded by a Torvald using field study, and by being under the effect of Furia's ultimate. Now, if you have both Drogos' Fire Spit and Tyra's Hunter's Mark on a single target, or you have both a shield with Field Study and Furia's Ultimate at the same time, then the two damage amps will have diminishing returns on each other, and the two damage debuffs will have diminishing returns. But this is so rare that it's honestly not worth worrying about. Just know that if you have Furia's Ultimate active and you mark someone with Tyra or spit on them with Drogos, there will be no diminishing returns between the damage amp and the damage taken debuffs. Also, it's important to understand how conflicting effects work, because certain positive effects like movement speed and healing increase have their negative counterparts, being slows and healing reduction. If you're getting multiple sources of a positive effect and a negative effect, then the game first calculates the full diminished value for both the positive and negative effects. Then, it stacks those two values additively. For example, Inara can stack the healing increase from Earthen Guard with Rejuvenate. With diminishing returns, this is about a 42% healing increase in total. Then, this stacks additively with a healing reduction effect from Cauterize 3, which is 80% reduced healing. So, Inara would receive 38% reduced healing while her Earthen Guard is active with a Cauterize 3 debuff and Rejuvenate 3. And that just about covers all the different ways that diminishing returns can affect your game plan paladins. Now, let's discuss when it's practical to even consider diminishing returns when buying items and making loadouts. Like I said earlier, when stacking reload speed cards with deft hands, it's important to try and get the value from your card as close to a multiple of 20 as possible, so that way you're not wasting loadout points or credits. Diminishing returns is also important to consider when you're stacking one huge bonus with another smaller bonus. Harkening back to the lifesteal example with Ash, the 50% lifesteal bonus from the Indomitable card is so massive that it diminishes life rip 3 down to a measly 10% increase on top of the 50% for a total of 60%, making it a waste of credits to buy life rip when running this card at level 5. Buying life rip can also be a bad idea on Talus when running Perseverance and Primeval Might at high levels. If you were to use both cards at level 5, then you would get around 59% lifesteal while at low health and using overcharge. Adding life rip 3 on top of that adds just a measly 7% lifesteal on top of that, bringing the total up to around 66%. This is absolutely not worth the credits. However, if you're only running Primeval Might, Life Rip 3 is still worth it, because it still brings your total lifesteal while using Overcharge to around 45%, and you're only losing about 10% lifesteal from diminishing returns. With movement speed, this is a bit less of an issue. It's still a good idea to stack Nimble with Terminus's It Follows card, for example, because Nimble 3 will still give a bonus of almost 14% due to movement speed's reduced diminishing returns effect. The last practical example I want to talk about is with Yagaroth. As I mentioned earlier, Haven 3 gets diminished with her passive damage reduction to only grant a 10% damage reduction increase instead of the full 18% Haven normally grants. This gets diminished even further when Yagaroth uses Harden, which gives her 65% damage reduction at base and causes Haven 3 to only grant her an additional 4% damage reduction on top of that. So because of this, does that mean Veteran 3 is a better item on Yagaroth, since Haven gets diminished by her damage reduction abilities while Veteran gives her more health to apply this damage reduction to? Well, no. While it is true that Veteran is clearly better when Yagaroth uses Harden, Harden makes up for a significantly smaller portion of your gameplay than simply standing still in planted form or using travel form. In planted form, we can do a bit of simple math to calculate her effective HP with Haven 3 versus Veteran 3, to see that Yagaroth has slightly more effective HP with Haven even with diminishing returns. Effective HP is basically the amount of HP you would have if damage reduction gave you extra health, instead of mitigating the damage taken from shots. It's a good way to visualize how much damage reduction is making you tougher to kill compared to just raising your maximum HP. The higher your effective HP, the harder you'll be to kill. You can test this in the shooting range and see that with Haven 3, it takes one more shot from the Cassie bots to kill you than it does with Veteran 3 when just sitting in planted form. And of course, in travel form, the damage reduction from Haven is not getting mitigated by diminishing returns, and it gives her way more effective HP than Veteran. So, even on Yagaroth, the one character who Veteran might actually be good on, it's still ultimately worse than Haven. 
But anyways, that about wraps up this guide on diminishing returns in Paladins. It's a very important mechanic to know about, because it can affect how you buy items and make loadouts, and also explains why some builds aren't as powerful as you might think they should be. If you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like down below and also share it with anyone who you think might find this video useful. Also, make sure to subscribe for more content like this from me, and check out the Discord server and the Twitch channel linked in the description. I stream Paladins regularly on Twitch, and you can also find a whole bunch of people to play with on my Discord server. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time, peace out.